Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. So I'm working on a bridge collapsing tutorial, uh, but I thought it would be more exciting if I added a train over the bridge while the bridge is collapsing. Yeah, so I've been experimenting with different ways to make, to animate a train and uh, have it look realistic, at least in terms of its motion. Uh, so this is what I've managed to achieve so far uh, using the rigid body system. You can see we have the train on tracks and I think it's kind of taking this curve a little bit fast. Uh, that's why it's derailing. Uh, but uh, maybe if I increased the mass, let me try 5,000 and uh, maybe increase the friction a bit, that should reduce the, the banking and uh, also uh, have it non derail. So let me try that and see. I think it's a little bit better, but uh, again, you can reduce the speed of the, the train here so that it's non derailing. Anyway, and maybe uh, the curve here is just too much. It's too, yeah, it's, it's too, the curve is too strong uh, for this to go smoothly, so that's why it's derailing. Anyway, so yeah, again, as I said, I was trying to make a tutorial on how to uh, create a collapsing bridge, uh, but I thought it would be more exciting to add a train. So yeah, I'm experimenting here. And uh, this are uh, some of the results. So I'm just going to show you how to set this up. And uh, maybe when we get to the collapsing bridge, you will have you will be on the same page as me, uh, so that we can continue together. Again, yeah, let's get to it. So just open up a new Blender project and uh, add a cube. Uh, this is going to be our train. I'm just going to scale it just a bit. Uh, make sure you apply a scale whenever you you are using. Uh, the rigid body system. So let me turn on random colors here. Okay, this is our trailer or truck or whatever train. And now let's add some wheels here. I'm just going to add a circle with F. Just so it's easy for us to see that uh, the, the wheels are spinning. I'm just going to add in that. Uh, again, scale this to size so that, uh, again, make sure whenever you scale, you apply, whenever you scale any object, when you are going to use read body system, you apply the scale by holding down Control A and then hit scale. Uh, let me just open this. And I reset origin to geometry. Uh, actually, need to make sure that uh, the origin is at the center of the circle so that you have uh, the right spinning, the right spinning at the center. Great. Now we want these to be rigid bodies, so I'll just select them and then go to object menu, rigid body, add passive. So we selected a lamp there. Okay, so you see that they are falling down. We just need to add a plane here to catch them, like so. Uh, but uh, give it a rigid body type passive. And now this is what we are getting. So we need to attach uh, this uh, this wheel uh, to the body of the train by adding an empty here. Empty. Just let me use one with arrows like this. Okay. And now that we have that, I make sure that uh, it is at the pivot point of the wheel like that, so that the 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 other uh, wheel can rotate at that axis. Now to attach the, this wheel to this, we need to give this a rigid body constraint by selecting the empty go to the physics tab and then give it a rigid body constraint now you can select the wheel so that it's attached to the body like that now if you play back you can see it just falls down like that but uh, we need uh, the wheel to be able to kind of roll uh, on the surface so we need to change uh, the constraint uh, from fixed to something like hinge hinge just allows the the body or object 
to kind of roll on one axis so it can roll on this axis like this this is what we want and uh, if you play back now yeah, so our axis is it's rolling on this axis instead of uh, this what axis is this the y the y axis here so I just need to select this empty and rotate it so that the z axis is aligned uh, to or perpendicular to the axis we want uh, for the wheel to rotate so now if you play back you can see that uh, the wheel is, ro is rolling but uh, it's only one wheel we need four so what I'm going to do is just duplicate these two shift D move this this side and make sure that uh, you move the pivot point back here now you see this is what we have and now we need the hind legs I make sure when you're duplicating you duplicate you also duplicate the empties so shift D at the back now we have that you can see the object is rolling just to kind of I'm just going to slant the ground a bit so that you can see this actually rolling and uh, that is all we need Let me clear this now we can duplicate this for multiple trailers and let's first test this out onto I'm just going to make this the front by giving it a different shape than the rest that we know that this is the front now to connect this to this again you just add an empty uh, empty this time I'm going to use a cube just so we differentiate these conditions and uh, we can use a point uh, this will allow the train to to or the different uh, trailers to kind of pivot in different angles or different directions. So we need to connect the first one to the second one. Now to demonstrate that this is working, we can just uh, tilt uh, this a bit and maybe add a hump around here. So I'll just add a sphere and just add a torus here in this way. Give it a rigid body passing you can see that's what we have and I think that demonstrates that uh, this is the connection is working so maybe let me do a few more trailers here so you just select duplicate the last trailer with this connection or empty like so and I then connect select this empty and uh, let me call it let me see so this is empty is cube one so this should be connected to this cube and this here and again you can duplicate this again shift D and this should be connected to this and cube three like that so we have this kind of intersecting with our ground Let me tilt this so that we have more acceleration. I want this uh, to kind of roll over this. Yeah, if you see our train works very nicely. Now we just need a way to control it or to follow any direction how we want. Now for that, we are going to use another object. Let's just use a sphere. And I'm just going to give it a rough animation around uh, this area. So just select this, keyframe this going around in circles. Let's see how I just great. Let me reduce my timeline to about 120 frames. Now to connect, uh, to, to have the train kind of follow this object here, uh, again, we just need another empty or control object. So I'll just add 
another empty empty so this time let's use uh, uh, this sphere here and uh, we want it to be connected this main train to be connected to this but uh, since this is a rigid body system is this is not part of the rigid body system uh, we can't select it oh we can we can but i don't think it will connect let me see. yeah i don't think it will connect as since it's not a, it's not part of the rigid body system so it won't be pulling it so what you need to do is give it a rigid body system and uh, make sure you have it you have the animated uh, property checked as uh, since we have this animated so now you can see that uh, it's pulling this with this uh, but uh, the problem we are having is that uh, our connection is set to fixed so let's change it to pivot that way uh, the track can follow the train can follow uh, the curve better you can see how that is working now we just need to make our animation a little bit better and more realistic which is not that so i found the best way to make it a, a, a bit more realistic i like a train is uh, by adding a curve so let's add basic curve i'll scale this up just add a few control points something like that let me scale this up a bit as well now what i can do instead of using keyframes here i can just add a constraint out of this sphere so go to constraints and add a follow path constraint then select uh, the curve uh, so where is the sphere where is our sphere so it's this far uh, we need if we play around with this offset you can see how the sphere is following but uh, the problem is it's too far so we need to bring it back so let me just get it you can see if we animate this offset you can see how the curve follows this here just need to have it directly on top or aligned to the curve you can see it's a bit hard when you have the constraint uh, turned on uh, to move it around so what i'm doing is just holding hit g and then holding uh, shift to kind of slow down uh, the movement while i'm dragging this around so until I have it directly seated on top of the curve. Now you just need to animate the position of this. So animate the movement of the of the sphere. Uh, the problem I'm seeing is that uh, our movement is a bit reversed because you can see at uh, zero, uh, the the sphere is this side. But I want it to start at this side. So what I can do is select the curve, go to edit mode right click and then switch direction you can see that uh, the direction of the curve all our normals is from this side to this side we want it to switch uh, from this side uh, to this side so right click switch directions now you can see that uh, our curve or our sphere starts from there let me just start it there now we just need to animate this so add a keyframe there and a keyframe around there Now you see what we are having. We just need to scale up our ground so we have enough ground for our train. Now it's uh, too fast, so let's first reduce the speed a bit here. Let me 
let's select this here. I can see uh, the front wheel is not really touching the floor uh, because the way these constraints work is that uh, it's like you welded uh, a metal bar from the sphere uh, to this object here. So you're kind of just pulling this directly. It's not a rope, I'd say. Uh, it's just a, a welded uh, metal from here, a metal bar from uh, the sphere to, to the to the train so that's why you see that uh, this is a bit raised so if you want to have some loose in, loose area so that this kind of so that this is a bit touching the ground you would need another object and let me see let me first pull this sphere out of the ground so let's select this shift h we just pull it out of the ground by dragging this So as I was saying, uh, if you wanted to offset, if you wanted uh, these rules uh, to touch uh, the ground, let me just make sure that this is not snapping. I don't want these scale object location. I just want this here. So let me just. As I was saying, uh, the constraint here only works as a, think of it as a metal weld uh, from this sphere to this here. So when you're pulling this, it's likely going to uh, push uh, these wheels up. So it's not a rope connection, it's a, a weld. So to make it seem like, a, like a, a rope connection, you would need another object here, something like this. Let's add this here. And uh, you need another constraint that connects the sphere uh, to this cube and then this cube to our train. Let's see how that works. And you can see now it's a little bit better. But uh, we need this to be a rigid body too. And yeah, it can be active. Now you can see that uh, the wheels are touching because they're not, so because we have got that kind of, yeah, soft connection instead of us, a hard weld. So two fifty. Okay. Uh, we have. I'm not sure why that is stopping. Just setting up a few things here uh, so that this continues all the way here. So let me just do that. You see, the speed is uh, a bit high, uh, so but I guess you get uh, the point. Anyway, thanks you, thank you for watching. Uh, yeah. If you want to check out the project, you can become a patron and uh, download the project files. Uh, yeah, thank you.